Hey y'all, welcome to AlliCat Customs for today. I'm going to do the final assembly and setup of the ring and pinion gears in my old 10 bolt. Well, since my last video where I tore this axle apart, I went ahead and cleaned the housing up inside and out, and I've actually had the ring and pinion in and out of this housing four or five times as I uh, set the ring and pinion gears up. So I got, I got a good pattern, I got the backlash and the pinion depth and everything checks out right and it's ready for final assembly. So that's what I'm about to start doing right now is bolting everything together and putting the seals and stuff in and uh, getting this axle set up so I can move on and start a, other upgrades. So uh, one of the first things I'm gonna show you is what I use to uh, tap these bearing races into the snout of this housing. Uh, people use a couple different uh, tools to do it. But I'll show you a good old standby that I've always used in my own personal stuff. And uh, that's this uh, little piece of brass like this. Anything that's got a soft kind of soft metal like this brass or whatever uh, is a pretty good thing to use to, to reach inside and uh, tap the bearing races in. So another thing people use to uh, tap the races and stuff in on, on these bearings is a uh, bearing seal driver like this. And I use it too sometimes, but sometimes I can get a better feel as I use my uh, piece of brass to tap them in. So that's what I use on this, but either way works, whatever you feel comfortable with, just as long as you get the race, races tapped in good and square and uh, get them seated properly in the house and then you can move on to the next step. So I'm about to move to the front of the axle and uh, start putting the pinion in and uh, show you the tightening everything up, putting the seal and stuff in on the front. So uh, follow me there. So now I'm at the front of the axle. You can see my uh, shiny new uh, pinion bearing race in here and stuff. And I got everything cleaned up and I'm ready to install the seal. But before I do that, you have to uh, install the uh, outer pinion bearing and then the seal will trap it between the race and the outer seal. So uh, I'm about to uh, put a little uh, thin swipe of uh, silicone on this outside part of the housing. It's kind of chewed up and rough, so to give it a good sealing surface for this uh, seal to seal to the housing on the outside. So I'm about to uh, put the silicone on it and then as it's getting tacky and stuff, I put the uh, outer bearing in and then tap this in and uh, then get ready to put the uh, pinion through and put everything together. So. Alrighty, time to install the uh, pinion. As you can see, I have the uh, crush leaf eliminator sitting right here. And this is why you have to wait until uh, final assembly to uh, install the crush leaf or the crush leaf eliminator. It's because of the way the crush leaf is sitting on here. And this is the crush leaf eliminator. Um, when you're changing your pinion depth to get your pattern set right, every time you change your pinion depth, you're actually changing the distance between the inner pinion bearing and this ridge right here that the crush lever and the eliminator like this rides on. So you wait to your final assembly when you have the pattern set properly and then you can set this up. So you just set it up one time. So I got everything on it set up properly. It's got the right amount of shims on it. So I might just push it in from the back side and I get ready to put uh, everything on. I already got the uh, bearing sitting in here and got, uh, got some oil on it and got some oil on the uh, outer uh, seal so about to slide in the back side So once you get the yoke slid onto it and get everything started going together, you can go ahead and put your uh, your finished uh, pinion nut on it and uh, put some uh, thread locker on it so you can torque it down. And I'm gonna torque mine down to 130 foot pounds and then I'm gonna check my pinion bearing preload. 
So, uh, about to do that right now. So now that I got the uh, pinion nut torqued down, uh, it's time to check my pinion bearing preload. And that's what this uh, uh, dial type inch pound torque wrench is used for. Um, so you just put the, uh, put the socket on the uh, pinion nut and you go to rotate it around. And what you're looking for is not the initial moving, the breakaway torque, but you're looking for the rotational torque. So you, you, you center it out, you got a zero on it right now. And then you start spinning it, and as you spin, you can watch the uh, amount of torque be applied to it increase. So you watch it as you spin around a, a full circle, and you can watch as you're keeping steady uh, power applied to it. And what you're doing is checking the amount of drag on your pinion bearings. So that's as your pinion bearings are, are being, being squished down into the uh, races, it's increasing the drag, the rotating drag and the friction on the roller bearings. So Right now, mine's set up for a 24 inch pounds of rotating torque. So that's what it's reading on the on one side and it's reading the same on the other. So it's holding at 24 inch pounds. So all I had to do was put it all together, torque it down. I already had everything set up on my uh, crush sleeve eliminator. So I ain't had to worry about trying to crush no crush sleeve down or nothing. Just uh, tighten it down, torque the pinion nut, check it out, everything checked out. Time to go to the back side and start uh, putting the carrier in and getting ready to check the backlash and the pattern and uh, just about have this rear end whooped. So now that I got the pinion put in, I moved around to the back of the housing here to put the carrier in. I wanted to show you, when you put the, uh, get ready to put the carrier in the housing, make sure that your work table and stuff is, is clear to where you can actually put the carrier in and hold it one handed and reach down and grab all the shims and the, and the bearing caps as needed. So you don't have to worry about the carrier sitting up here and possibly falling out or banging against the carrier bearings and damaging one of the carrier bearings. So once you get it set up in there, you can hold it with one hand and reach down and grab your shims and your bearing caps and can do all that stuff one-handed. So once you get the carrier set in there, a good trick is to always set the carrier in and then go for the shims and the bearing cap that is on the opposite side of the ring gear. So that way the ring gear is kind of still away from the pinion. So you can put the shims and stuff in and then you push the ring gear towards the pinion and then you can put the backside shims and carrier cap in. And that way it kind of keeps it from possibly binding against the pinion. So that's what I'm about to do is about to set the carrier in here and put the caps on and get ready to torque them down and, and check my backlash. <clears throat> So when you get ready to put the uh, shim stack on the back side of the uh, ring gear here, this little shim stack out right here, once you get ready to put it in, um, in order to have any kind of uh, a carrier bearing preload, you have to um, make the shim stack uh, just thick enough that you have to actually tap it into place. So once you get it started, then you have to kind of lightly tap it into place and that'll give you enough uh, carrier bearing preload so you have a good, good tight uh, bearing setup on here. So you just, once you get that tapped in and then you can put the uh, caps on and torque them down and get ready to run your pattern. Boom, got it done. So now that I got the carrier installed and got all the uh, carrier bolts torqued down, now it's time to uh, set this uh, dial indicator up on the magnetic base and get ready to check my backlash. Now you gotta get the uh, dial indicator as square to the rotation of the ring gear as possible and try to get it as, as plain on so you can get a, get a good 
um, accurate reading of, of the rotation of the ring gear. And what backlash is, is, is it's actually the slop between the uh, pinion and the ring gear. So when you're holding a pinion still and you move the ring gear, any of the actual movement that you uh, feel and hear is uh, backlash. And uh, as you could tell on the uh, earlier video when I took this thing apart, the other uh, rear end had a ton of backlash in it. It was just about wore out. I was just about to break it. Um, the backlash is supposed to be really tight. And this is supposed to be um, anywhere from a 0 .003 to a 0 .008 or so. So uh, as long as it falls into that, that range, um, it's good to go. You have a good reading on the backlash and then you can check your pattern. So uh, I'm about to zero this out and uh, check it out and see what my backlash is for my final assembly. So got everything set up, about to rotate it around right now. So I got the back, backlash checked out. It checks out at about a .005, which is a uh, really good, uh, really tight um, reading on it. So uh, I checked it on several spots around the uh, ring gear and, and it came up the same every time. So uh, that means that the uh, ring gear is running true and the pattern is running true around it. So I'm gonna take the uh, dial indicator off of here and then I'm going to uh, put some gear marking compound on my gears and then I'm going to spin, spin the gears around, check the pattern and if the pattern checks out, then this ring and pinion will be set up properly and ready to ride down the road. So uh, about to do it right now. So what you use to check your gear pattern is uh, some uh, gear marking compound and uh, this kit come in a little uh, jaw like this, a little tube thing like this. And uh, it didn't come with a brush, uh, so I um, made me a little brush like this. And uh, my dad's gonna kill me when he finds out I stole one of his brand new brushes to do this with, but uh, it's all I had. So I uh, folded it over with a zip tie because uh, zip ties fix anything that moves when it shouldn't. So. It works. Um, so you just uh, you mark the, the coast and the drive side of the gears. So I'm going to show you. I already got, got the uh, um, uh, marking compound on the uh, gear piece. I'm going to show it to you before and after I spin the uh, um, ring, ring opinion around. Uh, you have to put some pressure against the ring gear and you spin the pinion and it, to get some pressure to, to actually make the pinion gear wipe the uh, gear marking compound off the ring gear and whatever the pinion gear wipes off of the uh, ring gear is actually shows its contact pattern wherever it touches and swipes the uh, uh, compound off that's where the pinion gear is going to make contact so you read that contact pattern whether it's a uh, you know high or low on the teeth or you know towards the heel or the toe of the teeth uh, and you check your uh, that's how you check make sure your uh, backlash is correct or your pinion depth so I'm gonna show you the uh, before and after of this setup. And I got some pictures to show um, the original when I first set it up and kind of the progression as I, as I put this rear end together a few times, which is a good reason why you don't just slam gears into your axle on takeoff because the very first pattern that I put on here was so terrible, it would have chewed the gears up before it ever got uh, past uh, the end of the street. It, it would have it just ate them to pieces. So I'm gonna show you the uh, show you show you the before and after, and then show you those pictures. So here it comes. All right, here comes the reveal. See what she looks like. Oh yeah, that was good on the drive side. Coast side looks pretty good. So uh, that gear pattern is runnable. Looks like a pretty good gear pattern. Well, that just about wraps the build up on this rear axle. Uh, the pattern checks out, everything looks good on it. 
So the last thing I got to do is I got to install the C-clip eliminators and shafts. So I'm going to make a video of me doing that and uh, doing a great job on both sides. And when I get done doing that, then I put the cover back on, fill it full of gear oil, and uh, this we're going to be ready to ride down the road. Um, I'm going to have to break the gears in. Uh, every manufacturer has a different standard of what they're going to do to what you have to do to uh, uh, break the gears in properly so you get a good long life out of them. So once I get done with that and get this truck on the road and, and break the gears in, hopefully it'll last a good long while. Depends on how, how uh, much abuse the uh, carrier and stuff can handle on it. So uh, as soon as, I, soon as I get this truck back on the road, uh, y'all be able to see me uh, break in the gears and get this truck ride down the road. And uh, if I happen to break it, then y'all get to catch it at a later date. So uh, I'm gonna beat on it like it owes me money until it breaks. And then when it breaks, then I get take take pictures of it, tell a good story, and I get to upgrade it and show y'all the upgrades. So that just about wraps this video up. I hope it was helpful. And one thing I have to tell y'all is Make sure if, if you're ever going to start building axles on your own, make sure you do all the reading you can, studying, watch videos, you watch mine, uh, watch the step-by-step -step videos. Um, everything, every little bit of studying helps when you're trying to build one of these axles. Once you get into it and start familiarizing yourself, take your time. Make sure you have the right tools to get everything done. Take your time and just keep working at it and you'll eventually get once you get a good pattern like this on my rear axle and everything checks out and all spins properly then you're you got it whooped so just just make sure that you take your time that you study and and learn as much as you can before you start buying parts and everything and if you think of something that you want to get involved with and do on your own that's a really good skill to have because once you start getting comfortable building axles on your own then you can start building axles for other people because not everybody wants to go through the trouble of building these axles. So uh, it's a really nice nice skill to have and uh, I enjoy building axles myself. And this is the first axle I've built in a little while so uh, I'm really happy to get back out here and, and build axles and set up gears and stuff like that. So I hope this video was helpful and I hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope y'all come back for more. So uh, like and subscribe at the bottom of the page and I uh, hope to see y'all come back for more because got a whole lot more work to do to this truck. So. Uh, Y'all stay tuned.